We're so grateful, Lord, for this another opportunity. We're grateful, God, for this day that you have made, and we will continue to rejoice and be glad. We know, God, without you, we can do that. And all things are possible if we just only believe. We believe, oh God, that you'll see us through. And we hope in you too, that promise, Lord. You that you'll be down with us. Now, as we go forward into our message today, for your blessing upon the hearers and the doers, oh, we pray in Jesus' name, you may be seated in the Lord's house. Hallelujah. I want for the sake of you just listen to my and Tamela's worry to you today.
He gives you great consolation to know that help is on the way. Have you ever had to say, Lord, help? Have you ever said, I need your help? Then you get a confirmation that help is on the way. The message today, by the help of the Lord, is found in the familiar text of the New Testament, the Gospel of John. Have you turned with me and look at the 11th chapter? So familiar to all of us. The 11th chapter of John Gospel. I'm going to read just a response of Martha as she was talking to Jesus. In that 20th verse of the 11th chapter, our Lord Gospel according to John. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if I had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now topic in our text today, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. That is our message for today. In what Jesus said to Martha during a difficult time. Jesus was confronted by Martha after his request on the behalf of Lazarus. Lazarus is one of our main characters of the Bible in the New Testament that has been so often talked about. Lazarus, the subject in Sunday school, the subject of sermon, has been talked about in reference to his death. And Jesus responded to Martha by simply saying, Martha, you're talking to the resurrection. That is a profound statement because it's coming from the Son of God. Resurrection simply mean from a simple term being raised from the dead. Here Jesus is talking futuristically and he's talking presently. When he said to her, I am the resurrection. Martha, you may be familiar with the resurrection to come because he heard 
what she said. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus simply said, I'm talking about right now. You are looking at the resurrection. Now, resurrection from a biblical uh, analysis, uh, there are three primary meaning resurrection in our Bible. The first one has to do with a miraculous uh, healing. Resurrection has to do with a miraculous healing. And in this usage, resurrection refers to individuals who have been brought back to life. In many cases, it's called resuscitation. Uh, in this present world, there have been many biblical occasions where resuscitation has took place. You have the perform of Elijah in the Old Testament, the widow woman, her son in 1 Kings 17, uh, was raised again from the dead. You have Elisha when he did it, the Shulamite woman and uh, this woman's son in uh, 2 Kings 4, uh, he was raised from the dead. Then you have Jesus in the New Testament when Jairus' daughter had died and Jesus came and he raised her back to life. Resuscitation or resurrection. All, right. All of these uh, with additional characters in the Bible, they were uh, resurrected or resuscitated, but they had to die again. Lazarus, in our text today, he died. Yes, he died. Lazarus died. Even though he died, uh, he was resurrected by Jesus. It is a miraculous thing when you look at Jesus and you look at the Gospel of John. You look at Jesus, uh, you find many of his miraculous miracles taking place in the Gospel of John. You find Jesus, even though in our text, Jesus said, I am. I am. Uh, and in John, he often talks about, I am something. Uh -huh. In John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Yeah. If you're hungry, and you want life eternal to me. I am praying for you. In John 8, 12, he said, I am the light of the world. If you are walking in darkness, you need not walk in darkness because folks who walk in darkness, they stumble and they fall. But Jesus said that I'm the light of the world. Even though it's dark, you won't stumble because I will shine into the darkness of the light. He also said that I am the door of the sheep. He said that because uh, anybody come in my door, there is benefits when you come in. If you are a sheep and I am the shepherd, Come in, and if you want to come in, yeah, the shepherd awaits you for you to come on in. He goes on and say, I am the good shepherd. Do I have the type of people in here who are talking back with me this morning? I am the good shepherd. The, the good shepherd, Jesus said, will give his life for his sheep. A good shepherd does that. He said, I am the good shepherd. Then he goes on to say, in the 14th chapter, John, he said, I am 
Oh, no, no. 
because I get my therapy. Standing here saying to you what this says. Show up knowing that all of us got some. 
saying you have never experienced resurrection. But if you're a child of God, you had to first die to sin. Am I right? You had to die to sin in order to be resurrected into a new life. I've been born again. I used to hear the old church say, I died one time, and I ain't going to die no more. You know what? When you've been resurrected and walking in the newness of life. That's what Jesus said to the mother. He said, I am the resurrection and the life.
know that our church is open. Tears like breaking bread. Many of you are doing good by placing when you come in. Okay. But uh, those who didn't do it, uh, the basket awaits you as you exit. It's, it's hard to give. Well, it's easy to give because you give without worship. But you can't worship without without giving. Giving, and many times people go think about money, money, money. And I don't know, every ministry needs money. And you become the provision in that ministry. And we can trust you. One of the new strategies is trusting you with your substance. One of the new strategies when you come into this building, you come with the giving spirit. You come with the expectancy, but y'all come with the giving spirit. We're going to get you to learn to give when you enter. Instead of somebody got to keep coming to you, coming to you, pretty much twisting your arm to give. Freely give. Freely you will receive. You'll pray the benediction prayer with the offering prayer. We're going to dismiss you in the process. Shall we bow? Father, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the participation of the Spirit. We thank you for your people, oh God, and we thank you for their gift of offering and man their time. We pray, Lord, you continue to bless us to be a blessing to the kingdom here on earth. That we can trust each and every person with the substance that you bless them with. And as we leave this place, oh God, we pray you keep us in your care. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. Now, may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, the rest and rule with us.